In this video, I'm going to show you how to replace your ABS sensor on the front of this Chevy Silverado. It's located behind your front rotor mounted directly on the hub, so let's get started. Let's remove the wheel. If your truck has the center caps, you're going to want a 22 millimeter socket, same as for your lug nuts, and remove all of these plastic covers, unthread them to pull the center cap off. If your truck doesn't have this, of course, just skip this step. Now take off all of your lug nuts with the same socket, 22 millimeter. Now remove the wheel. With the wheel off, let's remove the caliper. It's easiest if you turn the wheel to one side so you can get better access. Use a 21 millimeter socket and remove both of the caliper bracket bolts so we can remove the entire caliper and bracket assembly and set it aside up on top of the upper control arm. There's one bolt. I'm going to leave it threaded in so I can take this one out safely without it falling off. Okay, take these bolts out. Now you should be able to get the caliper off of the rotor. You may need some sort of a prying tool to help you out. There we go. I'm going to put it right on top of this upper control arm, just like that. I'm going to put it right on top of the knuckle here and I'm going to tie it to the upper control arm. This is how I secured it here with a heavy duty bungee cord. It's not going anywhere. Brake hose is not being pulled on so we can continue. Your rotors should be secured with one of these set screws. If you don't have them, well, don't worry about it. It should come off at this point. For me, it's a T30. So put a T30 socket in there and remove it. Hopefully yours comes out. A lot of times these seize up. Now you can remove the rotor. Follow the ABS wire and unhook it from its retainer on the frame. With it unhooked, you should be able to disconnect it. There should be a locking tab here. Mine is broken. So it just unplugs like that. Get any sand out of this connector. It has two more points where it's secured. One on the back of the knuckle here. And one on the side. Now you can get to your ABS sensor right here is a five millimeter Allen bolt. This is what holds on the sensor. So let's grab a socket and remove it. Sometimes these might be a little bit rusted on. So you'll have to hammer a socket on here. And if this shield is in your way, push it out of the way. I'm actually just going to bend it up because it's going to be easier to pull the sensor up at this point. Once again, five millimeter Allen. Try not to strip it out. A lot of times it does strip out on the head of it. And then you'll have to find different methods to take it out. Usually you can cut a slice in it just so you can use a flathead screwdriver. There it is. And now if you grab the wire, fish it out from behind that shield. You should be able to pull the ABS sensor right up and out. There's an O-ring on it, which is probably what's making it stuck. Oh, it looks like this one has two O-rings. And there it is. Be very careful not to get debris inside of the wheel bearing at this point. So I'm going to gently wipe everything away. This one is fairly clean. If yours is rusty, hopefully it's not too rusty in the area that it mounts. If it isn't, just leave it as it is. Don't try to clean it off because it will get debris in there if you start sanding and, and uh, wire brushing. So this one's in good condition. Wrap your ABS wire behind this shield, put it down in its mounting hole and press those O-rings down very gently. Wiggle it back and forth just like that. Let's get that mounting screw in. Get it started. The threads are often not rusty. It's more so the head of the bolt that rusts. So once you get it snugged up, bottom it out just like this and give it at most an eighth of a turn. If you over tighten it, not only can it either strip the threads or break the bolt, but it could also crack the ear off of this ABS sensor and then you know, it's not going to really hold on much anymore. So you want to be careful about this. Now, if you bent this shield up, bend it back down to protect the ABS sensor. Before reinstalling the rotor, coat the hub in a thin layer of anti-seize so it doesn't rust in the future. Try to avoid getting it on the lug studs. On the back side of your rotor, where it mounts on the hub, make sure it's clean. If it has rust, sand it down to a nice flat surface and then slide it over the hub. When you slide it over, make sure that the retaining screw hole lines up with the threads that are cut into the hub. Grab your T30 bit and tighten this up. This doesn't need to be extremely tight. It's nice and snug. This will hold the rotor until you're ready to put the caliper on. Let's re-secure the ABS wire now on the knuckle. 
and then up on top of the bracket here and then just follow it up to plug it in. Make sure that connector clicks, secure it onto the frame. Grab your caliper, slide it over the rotor. There we go. Let's get the caliper bracket bolts back in. Let's bottom these out. 221 foot-pounds of the torque on both of these bolts. All right, and there you have it. Let's put the wheel back on. Put the wheel back on. Start on all eight of your lug nuts, bottom them out in a cross pattern, and also in a cross pattern, torque them to 140 foot-pounds. hundred and forty foot-pounds in a cross pattern. Here we go. Double check them. And of course if your truck had one of these center caps that screws on to each lug nut, put it on and with that same 22 millimeter socket, tighten it back up so it doesn't go flying while you drive down the road. I don't recommend using a power tool on these because they are very delicate. You can easily strip out the threads if you're not careful and it will fall off at that point if it's not held on properly. All right, those are all tight. There you have it. Take it for a road test. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.